When she called 911 that day, she said, I cut my mom's neck off. The police had been called on her so many times for so many reasons, but nothing as shocking as breaking a glass table over her mother's head. This is the story of Hend Bustami, the Las Vegas wannabe DJ who said she was too good looking to be arrested. Hi friends, I'm Katie and this is Katie Does Crime. Thank you for joining me for the first time if you're new here and hello to the usual rapscallions and reprobates. Please consider subscribing or joining me on Patreon if you'd like to hear more true crime stories. The call began as most 911 calls do, with the dispatcher asking if the caller needed police, fire, or medical. But the caller, in a childlike voice you almost might describe as innocent, responded in an unexpected way. Uh, medical, I think I killed my mommy. So weirdly straight to the point. And when you find out exactly what happened, you'll realize exactly how strange it was for her to only say that she thinks she killed her mom. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, medical, I think I killed my mommy. Why do you think you killed your mom? Because I did. I, I murdered her. How did you do that? Yeah. I, the, I broke the table on her head and I broke it. You did what with the table? Can I get medical? Medical 8759? Where, where are you? I'm at my mom's house. I didn't hear the address. You said with June flower. Yeah. Okay. What did you do to her? I killed her. How did you kill her? You said something about a table? I broke the table on her head. You dropped the table on her head? I broke the table on her head and I cut her neck off. And you cut what? Her neck off. Where are you at now? I'm in the car in the water. What kind of car are you in? It was about 2.30 a.m. on October 26, 2022, when the call came in to the Las Vegas dispatcher. It ended just as abruptly as it began when the girl or woman who had just admitted to murder suddenly hung up. Police responded to the address given to 911, and there they found 61-year-old Afaf Hassanen, unresponsive with multiple deep lacerations, stab wounds. She was pronounced dead there in her home, but the 911 caller was nowhere to be found. Acting quickly, investigators found that a mother and daughter resided in the home, and when they reviewed the neighbor's ring doorbell camera footage, they saw a Honda Accord leaving the property. The California license plate on that vehicle was registered to 28-year-old Hend Kareem Bustami. Then, using license plate readers, California Highway Patrol was able to find and stop Bustami's car on I-15 three hours away in Barstow, California. A 2017 graduate of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Bustami called herself Henny on Facebook and a hospitality professional on LinkedIn. She had gotten her bachelor's in hospitality management and worked as a server at Momofuku and as a brand ambassador for the City Trees Cannabis Company. But now she was with the multi-level marketing hair care company, Monate. One of my weird secret YouTube passions is content about the dangers of multi-level marketing, so I loved finding out that this little murderer was also part of an MLM pyramid. You will also love knowing that she was a DJ named Aphrodite, and her SoundCloud page says she's the goddess of love, sex, and beauty, here to transcend you into unique dimensions using your ears through this divine feminine's perspective. Her DJ Instagram account is also hawking her MLM products, of course. It was now three hours after the 911 call, and according to KTNV News, Bastami was still frantic when Las Vegas homicide detectives arrived in Barstow. Her hands were cut up and there was blood on her clothes and face. Bustami said she and her mother had an argument, and she ended it by busting a glass end table over her mom's head. And then she used the broken glass from the table to stab her mom. The argument was over cigarettes. Apparently, Bustami wanted them from her mom, and the conversation devolved into an argument over the nature of their relationship in general. When Bustami's mother left and went to her bedroom, Bustami followed her and hit her over the head with the end table. Bustami was arrested on open murder with use of a deadly weapon and evading arrest. She was extradited back to Las Vegas in time for her first court appearance. 
Now, this wasn't Bustami's only run-in with the law, and I don't mean to make light of any crime, but if you love to hate a murderer, this next bit is for you. In August 2022, Bustami ate at a Chili's inside the Las Vegas airport and left without paying. While police searched for her, she decided to take a nap near the D-Gate security checkpoint and was being a nuisance to the TSA, so the police were called on her again. She was finally arrested at the baggage claim, where authorities say she appeared intoxicated and was acting belligerent. They said she threatened to spit on them. She said she was being harassed because the cops had never seen anyone as pretty as she was. She called them pervs and said they were trying to rape her because they had never seen anyone so good-looking. She was arrested for public misconduct. And, oh yeah, an outstanding warrant. Because she also assaulted a security guard in June 2022, was so drunk she couldn't sign the citation against her, and then never showed up in court for her arraignment. Hend killed her mother the day before she was scheduled to appear in court for the Chili's Dine and Dash incident. This was also not the first time Las Vegas police had been to the home where Bustami lived with her mom. According to KLAS News, they were called to the house 12 times in 2022 alone. Seven of the calls were for family disturbances, and one of them was for an attempt at ending one's own life. The news station didn't mention whose attempt, but we can likely guess. A neighbor told 8 News Now that the home was the loudest on the block, and the two women would just be screaming at each other after 10 p.m., sometimes in their backyard. Wednesday wasn't the first time police had been called to this home. Usually 10 o'clock or later, we would they would just be screaming in the backyard or they'd be fighting. Andres Moreno, who lives nearby, says the house in question was the loudest on the block. Yeah, I could always hear the screaming and yelling, so I just try to keep to myself. And of course, shortly after, you know, the screaming, their police presence would be involved and things would get, you know, would get settled down. And then a week later, it happened again. Nancy Grace's Crime Online website reports that Bustami's mom told a friend of the family that she was fearful of her daughter. She allegedly said just the night before her murder, I'm worried to go home. Maybe she will kill me. The friend called 911 to report this threat the next day, but of course, by then, it was too late. And there's at least one documented case of why Hen's mom had reason to worry. In July 2022, the police were called when Hen kicked and slapped her mom. According to 8 News Now, she then went outside, picked up a rock, and said to her mom, Do you want me to hit you with this? Then she allegedly tried to light a family member's beard on fire. Apparently, nothing ever came of it because there were no witnesses and no actual injuries, but the incident seems even scarier now in retrospect. I was able to find a post on Bustami's Facebook page from a few months before the murder where she posted about having trouble with her parents and in life. In it, she said she hadn't had a phone in months because her parents were holding it. She called life a series of unfortunate events and asked for assistance and a place to stay. At this point, she was a 28-year-old woman living at home without a real job, and it sounds to me like her parents just wanted her to take some responsibility by getting her own phone line. In January 2023, Bustami was ordered by the court to be held without bond. A grand jury then indicted her in March 2023, but she pleaded not guilty. The following week, the case made headlines as the prosecutor announced that the death penalty was off the table. It wasn't that surprising since Nevada hasn't put anyone to death since 2006, but the crime was so violent that it wasn't a sure thing. Bustami's public defender claimed that a psychologist found her to be experiencing intermittent exacerbations of psychosis and was in need of continuing psychiatric treatment. However, she was declared competent to stand trial. It turns out that a trial wasn't needed, though. On September 26, 2023, Hen Bustami pleaded guilty but mentally ill to her second-degree murder with a deadly weapon charge, the idea being that she was having a mental break at the time of the murder. Her plea didn't mean she would avoid prison, but would possibly cause a judge to show leniency in the sentencing. As part of the deal she got for pleading guilty to the murder, she also pleaded guilty to a bunch of her previous felony charges for things like burglary, home invasion, and selling drugs. Her drunken battery charge was dropped. The judge said, You did willfully, unlawfully, and feloniously with malice aforethought kill of Hassanen. And Bustami simply replied, Yes. You did un willfully, unlawfully, and feloniously, and with malice aforethought, kill Afaf Hassassin. Yes. <coughs> Hen Bustami spoke just above a whisper, admitting to the court she murdered her own mother. Any questions that you'd like to ask me before I go? No, ma'am. At the sentencing hearing in December 2023, the judge is said to have considered Bustami's past diagnosis of several types of psychoses and different disorders. So far, these haven't been made public. Neighbors simply describe Bustami as strange, 
walking into open garages, talking to herself in her driveway, or asking people she didn't know for rides. One neighbor says, who am I to say? But there was obviously something going on with her. She would come outside and literally spin in her driveway singing songs or talking to herself in her driveway, or she'd just walk up and down the street muttering to herself. I mean, I mean, I believe she had mental health issues and she really did desperately need help, but maybe she chose not to get it or, you know, who am I to say? But there's obviously something going on with her. At her sentencing hearing, Bustami declined to speak on her own behalf. The now 29-year-old was sentenced to 15 years to life, 10 years for the murder, and five years for using a deadly weapon. She'll be eligible for parole in 2037 with 420 days time served and will be able to undergo treatment for mental illness while incarcerated. Not a lot has been said about Hen Bustami's mother, Afaf Hassanen, so I found out as much as I could. She was born in December 1960, I assume in Egypt. Her LinkedIn lists her as a graduate of Suez Canal University in Egypt, where she received degrees in accounting and organizational behavior and human development. She managed a hotel near Giza in the 80s and was a flight attendant for Royal Jordanian in the early 90s. She went on to work in retail for several years before finally becoming an automotive salesperson. Her last job and of course her home were in Las Vegas, but she lists her location north of the Bay Area of California on LinkedIn. On Facebook, she follows the Egyptian Premier League football teams and the Egyptian First Lady. It looks like she may have moved to the U.S. in October 1991, which would have been just a few years before her daughter Hend was born. A neighbor told KSNV he would have never seen this coming for her, that she was never aggressive nor mean toward anyone in the neighborhood. Above all, it's incredibly sad how her life was cut short in such a horrific way at the hand of her own child. Hend Bustami is being held at the Florence McClure Women's Correctional Center in Las Vegas under close custody, a higher level of restriction. The Nevada Department of Corrections uses this for offenders who represent a potential for violence, escape, or disruption of institutional operations. Sounds right to me. It's of course a little amusing to make fun of Bustami for her outburst about being too good looking to be arrested. And it's convenient that she was wearing an Alice in Wonderland t-shirt at the time of her California arrest that literally says, we're all mad here. But the underlying issues in this case are actually really troubling. The fact that Bustami called 911 herself, that she admitted to the crime right away in that childish voice, it makes me think that she had something akin to regret or at least acceptance that she'd done something wrong. All of the articles about the crime describe her as driving aimlessly in Barstow when she was picked up by the highway patrol. It doesn't seem like she was exactly trying to escape. With even the neighbors recognizing that something was going on with her, and with the court mentioning her psychoses, it makes me wonder if she ever had gotten help before and what happened. It's no excuse for what she did, but I do hope she takes the court up on its offer of mental illness treatment. As always, please let me know what you think about this case in the comments. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you like spending this time together. I would be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime.